Hey guys, Tommy B in NC. Um, just having to work on a friend of mine's V3 quad yesterday, which uh, he had taken it to a shop in his local area, and they had uh, basically took a brand new V3 350QX and, and butchered some things up on it trying to hook up telemetry. And of course, when he got it back from the hobby shop, it, it wouldn't even go into bind mode. It was flashing uh, red light on the rear, low, high, beep, beep, beep. And uh, what that was indication, it was not finding the compass. Um, I, I troubleshooted it down, being I had mine to borrow parts off of to keep eliminating. We came to the conclusion that it either had a damaged wire or the wire toward the for the compass was not making a connection. Cured it, fixed it, helped him set up his radio. He's happy as hell. He was happy enough to where he actually gave me the telemetry module. Thank you, Danny Walker. And um, I know he, you know, one reason he gave it to me is being a nice guy. And then on top of it, he wanted to see if I could get it to work, I'm sure. Well, of course, I've took off on that journey now. TM-1000 telemetry module. You'll need that, and you'll need the GPS sensor that ties into the module. Okay, well, the thing is, is mine's a V2 firmware. It has the ferrite rings on the wires, on the, on the ESC wires. Okay, well, it didn't allow me a lot of room here in this area. So what did I do? Uh, being the innovative uh, person I am, I took the module out of the plastic box, and it makes actually a nice little screw holder now. And, and I, you know, I kept my two sides, and I, I'll get to what I did with one side of it here in just a second. But as you see, I stripped the module out of the box. Um, when I took it out of its case, I noticed it. Was, what it is, it's a two-layer board setup. They're soldered together, so it's not going to come apart anyway. And uh, I really don't know what the reason is. I guess uh, I want to say it's probably a trademark thing or copyright thing is where they've got it in the Spectrum case. Um, I know they've ran, Spectrum has run into uh, copycat things before, and I'm, I'm sure they're trying to escape that issue. But I took the module out of the case, and what I did, I wrapped the module in tape first, an uh, insulating type of tape, and then I wrapped that module in copper. I moved my ferrite ring back on the wires. I, keep, I kept having to uh, run the loops through until I moved that ferrite ring back enough to where I had this area right here to lay that module. And hence, that's my telemetry module laying in there like that. You got to be cautious as how you you lay this in here, the orientation of this, because there's actually a button right here on top that puts that module in bind mode, and you're going to have to have access to that button. And this was the thing uh, I, I saw this done over a year ago, and I kept a watch on the guy, and um, I asked him here a while back, was all well, he have any issues, and I questioned him. As well, hey, how are you getting back to that bind button? He said it had never crossed his mind. He never lost bind on it. Well, I always take it as I have the worst luck in the world. So I, I want to get back to that bind button. So what I'm going to do is in the top of my hull, I'm going to coordinate that down right there to that bind button area. And I'm going to drill an access hole right here where I can stick a pin in or, or you know, a, a drill bit for that matter so I can... Go through the hole and mash that bind button right there if I lose bind. Hopefully, you know, if you cut things on and do things correct, that'll never be an issue. All right, I got my module placed in here and I routed my wires. Okay, the set of wires that come out of the module and actually go to a Spectrum Telemetry compatible receiver. You don't have that on this doesn't have that type of receiver set up. That's more airplane and your higher end models. You don't have it on this. But what you have is you set of pins back here in this corner right here that are actually one set of them are used to run that ball camera, that nice camera. And I just got to see one of those yesterday and that thing's cool. 
Um, I like to have one, but I, I ain't going to spend five hundred dollars on that. I'm gonna stick with my little Mobius. But you hook that, you you plug that servo. That's the servo in, and you plug that into the the outboard set of three wires. Negative is on the outside. Hot is in the center. Here's something to remember too. This module right here only takes three to nine volts. So you can't tie it in 12 volt. It's only supposed to have three to nine volt going to it. If you tie it into 12, it's going to fry it. That center pin right there puts out five volts. It's four point something, but five volts is common. And um, hence that's where I'm pulling power from. And that's what runs the module. Then this lead right here is the voltage readout. And the voltage readout will be connected to my ESC. Um, I'm probably going to splice me in because I know eventually I'm going to go to a carbon fiber frame. And I wasn't even going to go through the hassle to solder me up a new ESC. I hate these connectors too. They're the worst to solder. Um, and uh, put together really. They're not bad on the solder. And it's, they're a pain in the ass to put together. A buddy of mine suggested spraying or putting some silicone lubricant in it when you put the connector together and I'm sure that's a damn good way but I'm going to eventually go to a T-type a Dean's connector on mine because all my planes use that battery and I'm tired of worrying about battery ends so think about it when I'm done this is going to be tied into the power lead coming from the battery that gets 12 volts of course okay then this wire right here is the data lead coming to the GPS sensor Notice I've got it pointing out the top, and then hence the little buttons oriented the right direction. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. <sighs> Allergy season. Okay. I wanted to put my GPS sensor in an open area away from any interference, etc. You know, inside the hull of the craft. Okay, I could have probably just laid it right down in the bottom of that right there and it would have worked fine sitting on top of those three posts that actually catch the GoPro or the uh, Seago 2 camera mount underneath the bottom. I probably could have just laid it in there like that, but you know, you don't want it shaking around, moving around. You want it, you know, a pretty firm location. So, the plastic case that I stripped down. I cut it down to where I only had the bottom plate of it. I drilled me a little hole to fit that screw that holds those GoPro mounts on, that GoPro mount on, and then hence I made me a little flat area here. 3M double-sided tape. We'll tape down to that right there, facing the sky. This has no forward or rear direction. It does have to face the sky. It, it doesn't matter orientation which way it's pointing. It's gotta face the sky. Now, with all, you know, there's probably some other things here you guys may question me about me, or question about, um, you know, I guess message me and I'll let you know what I've done to mine. You know, I've, I've held well over a year's experience um, with a 350QX V2, and I've done a lot of modifications to it and things, and I, the GPS mast, etc. I've done everything except go to V3 firmware, and I still don't think I'm going to do that anytime soon. Um, I think I'd just buy a V3 350QX and, and then go that route and leave my baby here alone. Um, I was trying to make a little short video to show you because I always get wound up and in a hurry on things. And next thing you know, it's together working and I'm flying. And I, I figured I'd stop a minute and give you some pointers and notes. This here would be a modification that I would only recommend somebody with a little bit of experience. Um, the soldering part of it is going to be where you tie in power to, to pull off the battery. That's going to take some soldering expertise. Um, it could be done by butchering that wire and butt splicing something in, but I, I always solder my connections on the aircraft. Um, as this thing comes along, as I come along with this project, I, I'll make a couple other videos and, and whatever it takes to give you all some information for those that want to try it. Um, of course, this is in its beginnings, um, and once I get it flying and, and done, I'll, I'll let you guys know, of course. Now, you know, keep in mind, this telemetry module setup will only work on a DX6 or higher radio. 
that has telemetry feature and you want to use that on a radio that not only has telemetry, telemetry features but it, you want it to have voice also because then it's going to tell you altitude speed etc um, the features that the telemetry offers is altitude speed uh, longitude and latitude which is the, exactly what I wanted because if you take a picture of that on your if you have a flyaway and you take a picture of that on your radio of the longitude and latitude coordinates you can take those coordinates dump them into Google Maps and it'll walk you right to your quad that was one of the cool features of that um, you know I had thought about using Flytrex and things like that but Flytrex you gotta have a phone card and things that that and and you know I just thought it was more of a hassle and um of course I was watching others that had done this now they you know one buddy of mine put his in the inner hull and it looked like it was crammed in there and then I've seen another guy do it and his stuff was on the bottom and things like that and I think his GPS thing was on the bottom that's not the way to do it that's supposed to be facing the sky but anyway I'll keep you abreast of things guys um have a good day burn up skies